All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, today, we are going to start prepping for our next unit, which is about gas law. Essentially, we're going to be learning about why when you shake up a can of soda and you open it, it goes everywhere. How does a straw work? How do you breathe? How do your lungs work? How does anything work? That is what we are going to learn about this for the next two weeks. Um, beginning with, you guys will have three labs that you're doing in this unit. Um, and this is your first one. This is an introduction lab. So make sure that you click this link right here to open up the simulation. I advise you have your tabs open as I do so that you can go back and forth. This lab, you can work at your own pace. I suggest you at least stick with me through the first one so that you can know what you're doing and get some important definitions. All right, let's get this party started and ha, huh, let's get it started in here. All right, so we have our gas laws in open and is the intro one. We're gonna click the intro icon. We did that and it tells us to click the green plus sign by particles. And we want to put in a hundred heavy gas molecules. All right, so we're going to click this double arrow. Add in 100. Everybody OK? Everybody have access to the document? Everybody's good? Yes, yes. OK, all right, so we put 100 in there and the question says to explain their behavior. Do they move fast or slow? Do they curve or move in straight paths? What happens when they touch other gas molecules? Take a few seconds to answer each of those questions. Don't just put one word in answers. Give, put some little thought into it. Like the particles move relatively slowly. Do they move in a straight line or curved path? Answer this to the best of your ability with your observations of these particles. All right. Give me a few seconds to get that written down while I sing to you. Do do, I do do, while I sing to you. Ouch. Sing to you. Do do, do do. All right, next up. Are we ready? Okay. Next up. Number two says, now click the red dot under the pump that represents smaller gas particles. That's this button right here. Um, pump 100 light red gas molecules into the chamber. Beep, beep, boom. Oh, snap. Party time. Look at all that. Look at 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 that. I mean, but really, though, uh, this is a great representation of different uh, pace, um, <laughs> particles moving at different paces. All right, so let's describe their, how their behavior is similar or different than the heavy particles. Look at their speed. What will we say about their speed? Are they moving faster or slower? Yeah, they're, they're going pretty fast there. You see, it's pretty, pretty fast, if I might say so myself. Um, they're moving faster. Are they moving in a straight line? Look closely. They are. They're just bumping off of everything. Mm -hmm. Because by the time they start going in a straight line, they bump up against something else. All right. Don't forget to compare their behavior to the heavy particles. All right, now, in terms of speed, what is the relationship between the size of the particles and the speed of the particles? Now, this is something we need to sit still and talk about, okay? So, would you say that the particles that are smaller move faster, the same pace, or slower than the larger particles? Faster, slower, or the same pace? 
Ooh, I like it. Say it louder for the people in the back. Good job. All right, so let's write that in a very scientific form. As the size of the particles increase, the speed of the particles uh, it decrease. We can write its reverse as well. As the size of the particles decrease, the speed of the particles increase. Okay. Yes, love, we all should take it only about 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Won't take long. It said that we can be ready for our lab on Tuesday. All right. This relationship right there, as one goes up, the other goes down. That relationship is called inversely proportional. As one goes up, so let's write us a little note here. Direct, directly proportional. As one goes, as one increases, the other increases inversely proportional y'all can't even see that can you in here i'm so sorry inversely proportional is as one increases the other what decreases Okay, so these definitions right here are going to be critical as we decide this answer. It says, what type of relationship is this? So as the sizes of the particles increase, the speed of the particles decreased. So what type of relationship is that going to be? Inversely proportional or directly proportional? As one went up, the other went down. As one increased, the other decreased. So, good job. I have one vote for inversely. Two, three votes. Good job. So, this is inversely proportional. All right. If you're at home trying to draw these arrows in, sometimes you can click insert and there will be a shape there. Other times there won't. But you need to describe this line either way. OK, um, so let's say that our y axis is our size of particles. OK. And our x axis is the speed of particles. OK. All right, so let's think about it. As the size increases, the speed increases. So when we put that into graphic form or graph form, it's going to have an upward arrow to the right, up to the right, because both are increasing. Both are increasing. I mean, oh, I messed that up. I messed that up. I messed that up. I messed that up. Yeah, I said I had to repeat myself three times in order for me to hear it. There we go. My fault. I made a boo boo. I had to revise. As the speed increases, the size decreases. So the size decreases as the speed increases. Yes, that's right. Downward. I always mess up the first one. Hmm. Triangle. Oh, it does go for triangle, doesn't it? Hmm. We should 
write that in a way that we can remember it. All right. Next, we're going to talk about temperature versus pressure. T and P. All right. It says to click the control handle on the bucket under the gas chamber. Drag it upward to increase the heat to 500K. So here's our temperature reader right here, thermometer. And here's our bucket down here that controls the heat. So let's increase the heat. What are we going to? 500? Oops. If you don't get exactly 500, it's okay. Mm, kill it. Pow. Boo, pow. All right, what is the current pressure? Our current pressures might be different, which is socially acceptable. You should not necessarily have the same exact answers as me. So that's, you know, okay if you don't. So 38.9 atmospheres. What was your pressure? It's okay. Do mm -hmm. it. No, read the the thermometer. Yours might be. Is yours in Celsius or Kelvin? No. Okay, there you go. No, it's supposed to be in Kelvin. What's your temperature now? Cool it off. All right. Now, once you do that and gather your data, let's go ahead and crank up the heat to a thousand. Let's see what happens. What is the pressure at this? Oops, I missed it. Did you get 39 I had 38.9. We should have different numbers. Oops. All right, what is my pressure? Well, my pressure at this temperature, what? I got 1,001. I know, I lose. It's okay. I was born this way. Okay, what is the relationship between pressure and temperature? Okay, well, as the temperature increased the pressure did what increased so what type of relationship is this inverse or x or uh direct directly good job good job good job Directly proportional. How cute is that? As one goes up, the other goes up. So that means it's directly proportional. Yay. Now let's put this in graph form. All right. The y axis will have temperature. And on the x-axis, we'll have pressure. Yes, I'm going to post it today because this is your async assignment for Monday. So I'm going to post this today. Yep. You too. Be safe. Make good decisions. Pressure. Yep. So my arrow is going to be facing which way? Yes. Up to the right. We doing all right, everybody? Oh. All right, let's look at pressure and volume. Pause here dramatically. All right, pressure and volume. Reset the system by clicking the orange circle. Boop. All right. Click on the collision counter to open the wall collision um, window. Make sure you click that link. 
says we want it to have a sample period of 20 picoseconds. 20 seconds. Click the green plus sign to open the particle box. 100 heavy, 100 small. Let it mix up a little bit. Yes, but you want to mix it up a little bit. Wait till it mixes up. Okay. Now it says to click the green arrow and measure the number of collisions in 20 picoseconds. Nice. I got 524. All right, let's do it again. See how close we get. What'd you get for yours? I got 539. You good. Oh, you got 500? 524. Oh, no. You're a poor computer. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I got 507 at time. Let me do it one more time. See what I got. Do, 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 do. 560, so I'm going to go with like 530 as my average. It says now select the width checkbox on the right. I am on number five. It says check the width box at the right, a dashed line. A dashed line with arrows will appear below the chamber indicating that the current width is 10.0. Record the maximum chamber width. Uh, speed of the particles and current temperature and pressure below. Our chamber width right now is 10.0 nanometers. My pressure is 23.4 atmospheres. My current temperature is 300 Kelvin. Average wall collisions, I had about 530 collisions. Uh, down here at the bottom, make sure you click width. Mine's 10 nanometers. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Now it says click on the gas chamber's left side and drag the chamber wall to the left as far as it will go. Okay. The record the maximum chamber width, speed of the particles, and current temperature and pressure below. My wall collisions, be sure to click, click play on your wall collisions to get the new routing. You had 440 that time. Four forty seven. So my chamber width is fifteen nanometers. Point oh nanometers. Oh, my pressure is so low. 15.6 atmospheres. My temperature is 300 Kelvin. Average wall collisions. I only had 447. Hmm. You and me? No. Interesting. Forty-seven. All right, click on the gas chamber's left handle and drag the chamber wall to the right as far as it will go. Record the maximum chamber width, speed of particles, current temperature, and pressure below. Let us get a new reading. My chamber width is now 5.0 nanometers. My pressure is, ooh, it's very high. Atmospheres, my temperature, still 300K. Average wall collisions, 909. Collisions. <laughs> Click the plus button, uh, the green plus button. Let's see how many particles you have. Make sure you have 100 of both. Okay, I have 99.2 of them. Use the 
the one black triangle to the right instead of the double. And that way you can add one at a time. All right. Hmm. Now it's asking us to form a relationship. What is the relationship between the number of war collisions in Prussia? Well, as let's look at these two. We went from 447 collisions to 909 collisions. Our pressure went from 15.6 atmospheres. It increased to 46.7 atmospheres. So my sentence would be what, DJ? Um, We're comparing wall collisions and pressure. The number of all collisions increases. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Okay, let's write our lovely proportion. Is it direct or is it inverse? As one increased, the other increased. That is direct. Directly proportional. All right, let's move on to the graph. Here goes our graph. Which way is the arrow going to be facing? Which way? I have one vote for up and to the right. Because it increases from the, the origin up, from the origin out. All right, here we go. Let's label our axes. This can be our number of wall collisions. And this will be our pressure is what is the relationship between the volume of the chamber and the pressure hmm let's look at the volume the volume is going to be our chamber width okay our chamber width our chamber width as the chamber width uh, decreased from 15 to 5 what happened to our pressure? Mm -hmm. We have one vote for more pressure, one vote for increase, correct. So let's put it into sentence form. As the volume of the chamber decreased, the pressure did what? Increase. Now that makes sense, okay? Let's think about this. We have the same number of particles in our chamber. The only difference is if it's five nanometers wide or 15. Pressure is essentially the number of collisions, okay? How many collisions occur? That's pretty much what your pressure is. You're gonna have fewer, exactly. You're gonna have fewer collisions with more space. That's why we have COVID restrictions that say you have to be six feet away. Because six feet away, there's more distance for the particles to travel. It's less likely to land on you. But if we're in a smaller space, more people, then the collisions of the particles increases. Social distance. All right, so let's talk about this. Is it directly proportional or indirectly pro or inversely proportional? One vote, for, one vote for inversely. Two votes for inversely. Three votes for inversely. Inversely means as one goes up, the other goes down. That's what inversely means. Mm-hmm.
inversely proportional. All right, let's put it in a graph. So it's going to be going which way? Correct. Do, 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 do. I just knew some kind of animal was going to come through that window. I had a dream that a bird came in here. Okay, focus. Yes, I don't even want to talk about it. It was terrifying. It was scary. Can you see the future? Yes, I can, and I'm scared. Um, just call me Raven Baxter. Okay, temperature versus volume. All right, now we got to click the laws button at the bottom of the window. This is important. If you don't do this, you won't find it, and then you'll be like, Miss Stanley, I can't find it. And I'll be like, it's right there. Okay, click laws. All right. Click the laws icon to switch tabs. Click the green plus sign. Pump 100 heavy, 100 small. Let them spread out for a second. On the hold constant menu, on the hold constant menu, you want to click pressure V. And we want to click width. A dashed line with arrows is going to appear. Our width is 10.0, it is not 10.6, and that is A-OK. -okay. We're gonna record the current chamber width, temperature, and pressure. So the width is 10.0 nanometers. The pressure is 23.4 atmospheres. Temperature is 300K. So let's click the heat control handle on the bucket below the gas chamber. Adjust the temperature to 400K. Remember, you should get your own numbers for these things. Your numbers should not always exactly match my numbers, okay? All right, so we want to increase this to 400. Whoa, did y'all see that? 400. Boom, hit it, boom, got it. All right, let's compare this chamber with now. My chamber expanded. Did you all have the chamber expand? Perfectly fine. Don't let me rush you. Um, I am going kind of fast. I apologize. Got you. It happens. It does happen a lot. Um, okay, so my width is 13.3 nanometers. My pressure is still 23.4 atmospheres. And my temperature went up to 400K. Everybody okay? So let's go ahead and how do you change the temperature? Oh, down here on this bucket. If you drag this up, it gets hotter, down for colder. You see the bucket. Gotcha. Good deal. Valuable question. So let's see what happens if we increase the temperature to 500. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Uh-oh. 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 DJ said he can't get past 450. Let's see. Ah! I can't either. I can't get past 550. 450. How'd you do it? I just pressed the X and kept going. Oh. Well, make sure that you have your volume. See? Is your volume constant there? When you click the X, yep, when you click your X, it takes away your pressure constant. So when you tried to go to 500K, you received an error message stating that the volume would be too large because of your pressure being held constant.
Do what? Oh, do I need to zoom in? Sorry. Is that better? Yeah. One second. There we go. Is that better? All right, so let's write a relationship goal. It says, what is the relationship between t temperature and volume? Okay, well, let's look. Oh, that was a bad decision, bad decision. Poor decision to change the font size. Are you I am. <laughs> what is the relationship between the temperature and volume? Okay, well, that's easy. Let's see. As the temperature increased, what happened to the size of the chamber? What did it do? As the temperature increased, the volume of the chamber did what? What happened to our width? If you look at your data, we went from 300 to 400. Say it again. Yep, it increases. Increases. As the temperature increases, the volume of the chamber increases. So what type of relationship is volume and temperature? Direct. Let us get a little graph directly proportional. Which way is my graph going to be facing? Oh, and to the right. Woo. Correct. Next up, number of particles versus temperature. We're going to reset the system. Is everybody okay? Do I need to pause? What is what the axes? Oh, good point. Um, temp and volume. Usually, when you're doing these, I would want you to have your units in parentheses. Um, just FYI, you do not have to go back and fix them, but just know that that is coming around the river bend. Um, so do be aware of that. Yep. I don't know. All right, so reset the system. Remember, we're recording, so we got to keep going. Then I'll answer that. Reset the system. Click the green plus sign. 100 heavy, 100 light. Let them spread out in the hold constant. We're going to hold constant pressure temperature. Select the width. A dashed line up here. Mm -hmm. Wait, pressure T. Mm -hmm. Yes, pressure T and the width. All right, let them mix up. Make sure you have 100 of each. All right. Let's start recording. Total particles, I have 200. Temperature, 300K. Width, 10.0 nanometers. Pressure, 23.4 atmospheres. How's everybody doing? Let's take a second. Uh, oh my God, what do do? Fahrenheit. Yeah. Kelvin is um is more of the universally universally used in the scientific land because it doesn't do anything crazy like Fahrenheit does. You can easily convert Celsius to Kelvin and Kelvin to Celsius by adding two seventy three point one five. 
it's just easier to use in my personal opinion and it works better in equations and formulas yup facts 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 all right now increase the number of particles to a thousand so we have 500 what did you notice happened to the temperature bucket that's cool Mm -hmm. Look at the speed of the particles, too. Yeah, the temperature went way down. And look at the speed of the particles. Yeah. Doesn't it remind you of that? Wouldn't that be a great segue? Isn't that insane? But doesn't 60 Kelvin sound a lot better? <laughs> All right, let's record this. Number of particles, a thousand. Temperature went way down, 60K. It didn't change. Make sure you held your temperature constant, um, your pressure with temperature changing. Make sure you click that in your held constant box. If you didn't click that, it probably won't change. Did that fix it? Very much so. How do you open that? No big deal. Down here, make sure you're in laws at the bottom. Because if you're still in intro land, you won't see that. So make sure you're in laws. And then you'll see something that says hold constant. It'll have five things there. And you want to make sure you have pressure with the T selected. Uh oh. You need to be let back in. You can leave and rejoin, Kale, if you need to. Let's see. Did that fix it, Eva? It won't let me click on the last three options. Okay, do you have any particles in there? It may not let you, it won't let you click it unless you have your particles. You should have 100. So technically you're at the, I meant 200. Technically you're on number three of the number of particles versus temperature. Go forth and conquer, DJ. Don't stop. I don't know. Read through and see where we are. Eva, it's not going to let you click it unless you have particles in there. So you would be on number three right here. And then that'll let you. Got it. Perfect. Perfect. Good deal. Good deal. Good deal. Don't apologize. Do not apologize. Uh -uh, we don't do that. You know, good and well, we don't do that. Yes, there we go. All right, here we go. We have a thousand particles, 60 degrees, chamber width is still 10 nanometers. My pressure, Kale, did you make it back in the room? My pressure is 23.4 atmospheres. And then let's talk about this relationship between the number of particles and temperature. All right, well, when the number of particles increased, the temperature decreased. Uh, yes, that means that 
Yes. So what, as the number of hourly particles increases, the pressure decreases because it's pressed. Say it again. The number of particles increases, the pressure decreases. The pressure, oh, you're oh. talking about for the next one? Yeah. Oh, we're not there yet. So just number five. This is about the number of particles in temperature. Number five, subsection particles and temperature. Number six says, what type of relationship is this directly proportional or inversely proportional? When one goes up, the other goes down, which means they're correct. I think I spelled that wrong. Inversely. All right, my graph is going to look like that. My axes are number of particles. Basement is temperature. All right, let's look at number of particles and volume. We'll pause here for a second. Number of particles versus volume. Here we go. Almost there, guys. Reset the system. Green for the particles. We want 100 heavy, 100 light. Let it spread out. Look how fast the red ones are going. Insane. All right. Now it says select pressure VT and the width. It's at 10. Record the total number of particles. 200 particles. My temperature is 300K. My width is 10.0 nanometers. My pressure is 23.4 atmospheres. Okay, now I'm going to add 50 more red and 50 more blue. Hmm, interesting. Click on the gas chamber's left side hang handle and drag to the left until the temperature matches the temperature reading from number three. So my temperature reading was 300. So I'm going to drag this until my temperature reads 300. Boom. So I still only have 200 particles. No, I don't. I have 300 particles. My temperature is still 300 Kelvin. My cylinder width, though, is different. 15.0 nanometers. And my pressure is still the same. So now I'm going to let you all write the relationships for number eight. And I'm going to let you do number nine. And I'm going to let you draw the graph. So you're going to do those on your own. Take a few seconds to do so while I dramatically sing to you. And I will always love you. You got to drag the chamber edge. There you go. That's how you change the temperature, peoples. Make sure you drag the chamber edge right here. This is how you are adjusting the temperature because you cannot use this bucket. So you're pulling it out to the left until you get the temperature from number four. And I, I will always love you. When you have finished eight, nine, and ten, let me know. And I, oh my goodness, it's already one fifty one. <laughs> Two zero. 
What is Miss Stanley ever meant I mean, that? I meant two o'clock. Maybe not two zero. Two o'clock. But we're so close. Okay, I'm gonna talk to you about this ideal gas law real quick. We were so close to two zero. Two zero. Close enough. It's basically two zero zero. Like basically. Um, all right, ideal gas law combines the variables for pressure, volume, number of particles, and temperature into one equation. Based on the data recorded in this survey, you're going to try to write an equation for the ideal gas law. The gas law constant, which is R, has already been provided for you. This hint saves lives. Variables on the same side of an equation are inversely proportional. Variables on opposite sides of the equation are directly proportional. Your job is to write this equation. And then submit this to an assignment that definitely exists. It, I'm, I'm telling a story. It doesn't exist now, but it's about to exist. It's about to. It's about to.